as a lighting designer, uh, doing Eurovision is kind of the show you want to do. And I've wanted to do this show since I was six, since Bucks Fizz, well, in 1981. And I used to watch it as a kid. And to uh, finally get the chance to design the lighting for it is pretty exciting. Uh, the second I knew it was coming to London, I knew I wanted into it and uh, kind of uh, manifested that I really wanted to be part of doing this show. The relationship between the lighting designer and us as designers is a really crucial one from the very beginning of when we are designing. And Tim embraced our concept of the hug and the immersiveness from the very beginning. Um, we carefully placed and blended all his lights with all the technology that we have in the set so that we can get maximum transformation. Developing and evolving the set um, and transforming it to many different looks is a key factor at Eurovision because we have so many delegations. Tim and I have had a very close, um, wonderful relationship and hopefully we get to do it again one day. It's very different architecturally from normal Eurovisions. Um, it's really hard set to light, a, a three-sided box effectively, even though the side arms are curved, you know, it, the set encompasses the set. So it's really tricky to be able to light around. And with those tracking doors, so those screens that move at pace, that revolve and track them down, up and down stage, they really are, um, they take up a lot of roof space overhead on the stage, all the mechanisms to make all of that work. But it really did stand out visually as a, as a look. And the, the, the four curved arms gives me a really cool architectural position for lighting beams. And we think we found some really kind of unique looks in how uh, the beams are visualized from those positions. So it does stand out and does say that this is a very different looking Eurovision. We started exploring the arts between both countries. So in the Ukraine, we explore architecture, poetry, dance, music theatre, um, the national flower of the Ukraine, um, and in the UK we explore similar things, and especially in Liverpool, given that it has such a, I guess, rich, strong music identity, it was quite a nice blend to sort of bring the two together. I think in the end we came up with the idea of welcoming the Ukraine to the UK and welcoming the people of Europe by creating a set that resemble a hug. So the architecture of our design has these very specific archways as if they are um, arms welcoming the individual to Liverpool um, and uh, from, from around the world. So that was an interesting design journey, um, very distinctive and, and quite challenging given that we have to sort of be celebrating both countries. But really we are you know, doing a show on behalf of the Ukraine. I'm Damo, Damien Jackson from Neg Earth, and I'm the uh, project manager uh, covering all the lighting requirements for Eurovision. Here we are in Liverpool, where we have the, the rig in, finally, uh, after uh, a good couple of weeks of, uh, of, of loading and, and then, and then into, into rehearsals now. So we are approximately 2,000 fixtures uh, across the rig, um, all, all throughout the arena. Um, we will be hundreds um, of kilometres of truss and thousands of kilometres of cable. Uh, we were 20 trucks of, of uh, full, fully loaded gear coming into the arena. The challenge has been, has been fitting all this in in the time frame that we were given. Um, we were, had to work around all of the departments building their systems at the same time. So it, it led for detailed planning between myself and the, and the gaffer and the lighting team on site. Um, other than that, it's you know, the, make, making the network and the patch reliable and standing up for the, the rigours of, um, of, the, of the operators. That's probably been one of the biggest challenges we've, we've had for sure. Tim and I work together quite, quite often, uh, as, he, as he does with Neg Earth. Um, and from, from the start, you can tell that Tim's been very, uh, very passionate about this project, so it's been easy to follow his, uh, his, uh, his passion and his excitement. Uh, it's been really good. We've worked together for quite a number of months, um, honing down the spec, making sure uh, what he, uh, making sure he got the lamps that he, he wanted to make the show work, but also kind of worked in a in a budget friendly uh, position. Even with Eurovision, we have, we have budgets, yeah. So um, it, it was good. I th I, I'm, I'm happy that Tim has got a good balance of of a kind of key highlighted uh, fixtures 
and, and also kind of workhorses that, that, can, that are more budget friendly that, that fill, the, fill the black spots. I think the way the lights are integrated around, around the set is, is, is really, really clever. There's a few areas in particular that uh, I, I quite like. The, the revolving doors, um, on one side you have video, the other side you've got uh, a big wall of lights and then behind that is another wall of lights. So that kind of gives Tim and the creatives three options of, of content um, to deal with for, for you know, back of shot. The lights on the back of the, the screens was quite a challenge to, to, um, to work. We had to make sure that the, uh, the, the distribution of weight uh, was finely balanced with the screens on the other side so that the screens can track down and, and back up the stage. There's lights in all corners. The, these uh, arcs, we have these two arcs either side of the stage with, uh, with, with really bright beam fixtures on which kind of really give Tim, Tim and the guys a real punch and I think they kind of give, uh, give a, a, good, a really good distinctive look to the show. These lights that you can see sweeping up into the audience were uh, are the arcs, um, uh, the fixtures on the arcs, which are the clay packy Sharpie X frames. They're kind of a really punchy fixture and uh, do a lot of the a lot of the big looks for Tim. Up here, you might be able to see all these big LED fixtures just face, facing out. These are um, these are supplied from Ayrton. They're uh, Ayrton Zonda 9 FX fixture. Uh, I think we've got 90 of them up in the rig. Um, they're all on uh, on what we call the Zonda pods, 10, 10 Zonda pods, which all move in, in individually, which again kind of give a load more dynamism to, 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 the, to the lighting design. The shape of them are, are inspired by the Svoboda. Um, so on them there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine Zondas and seven, uh, seven FR10s, GLP FR10s. Each of them all move individually and they completely encircle the stage. Uh, so Tim's used them throughout various parts of the of the show and I think they offer a really good uh, option for him they look great the Zondas themselves are a brand new fixture from Ayrton um, and re really punchy really bright and quite a versatile fixture there's several eye candy parts into this show there's obviously the Roby Tetra wall which is you know almost 200 Tetras on the back of the doors but I wanted to have a little bit of me in the show as well so um, we made these 10 lighting pods which are trapezoid shaped pods which um, are kind of a we call them the Svoboda 3000 so everyone knows the Svoboda pod light um, which I've always loved so we've made our own version of those using nine Zonda nines to make a huge looking pod edged in FR10s and um, it was my dad that got me into design, uh, my late father, and he showed me a book about the set designer and lighting designer Joseph Svoboda and that was always at home when I was a kid and I used to read it and so he got me into lighting in the first place and as a little nod to him uh, I created these huge Svoboda pods that fly in during the show. The whole set wraps around all the performers and then when you come out to the oval stage you get huge depth Around the edge of the of, the, of this B stage here um, are a bunch of Roby spiders, of which we have 22 of them rigged onto the Wahlberg lifting um, columns. So at any any given time, they they'll lift up to uh, various heights, which again just gives another bit of dynamism to 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 the to the rig and gives him more and more options. We've got lights wrapping all the way around the the arena. So again, when the camera pans out for the audience shots, Tim's completely covered with, with lights over the top of the heads. Um, there's never, there'll never be a black spot in the crowd, hopefully. The screens there behind us, one, two, the five screens, um, are supplied by CT, Creative Technology, and they're on a tracking system so they can move up and down stage. They can also spin, and when they do spin, they reveal a, a wall of, uh, of lights. On, each, on the rear of each screen, We've got uh, a number of Roby Tetra X fixtures supplied by Roby. Um, so again, gives Tim more flexibility within the rig. He can have the screens, he can spin them, he can have uh, a wall of lights, or he can even move them um, and reveal another uh, wall of, uh, of lights further to that behind. We did, uh, we did a test build of, of the screens and, and the lights before we came to site over in Belgium. Um, we've also got, uh, along these goalpost structures, Ayrton Kareefs, and uh, Roby lead beam 150s, which do a great job of just of kind of again filling up the beams along the, the arena. This is, this is one of the arcs, each with approximately 50 Sharpie X frames built into it. The uh, the arcs were uh, custom built by the set company to allow us to mount the fixtures in. 
either side of the LED tip. So here we are on stage and this is the, the wall of Roby Tetra X's I was just explaining which live on the, the rear side of the, the LED screens. So there's five separate walls of these which, which can spin. So when the screen, when the columns spin they can reveal, reveal the lights. Um, and also when they open up we have another wall of lights here uh, clad with Martin Skeptron and uh, Roby Painties. Uh, the Painties do a really good job of cutting through and giving, giving Tim a real big beamy look from from upstage um, but yeah these the, 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 these are a really interesting idea and, and a, a part of the design that I really I really like we um, we sent a load of equipment over to Belgium before we came to site so that we can test hang one column just to make sure that we um, the weight distribution of each column was correct so that the the column itself can travel along the tracking truss um, and uh, it, it works quite well. The Roby Painties are a, re a really great fixture. Um, yeah, you'll, you, you'll, you'll see at various times, just when, even when the doors, are, uh, the, 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 the doors are closed like this, you can see them punching through and I think, I think they really do a good job. Yeah. I mean, everywhere you look, there's lights. We've managed to, we've managed to cram lights in uh, everywhere. Even even above the the LED ceiling up there, there's um, there's a big finger array of clay packy unicos, um, which which were the first things to go in, the last things to come out, just through the nature of the of the build, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've managed to get lights everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's your vision. That's your vision, yeah. Here we are on the stage. Gives you a good idea of the of the, of the scale of the setup. This is kind of the, the main stage system as we say in between the ovals. You can get a clearer clearer view of these, these Zonderpods now. Like I say each clad with the with the FR10s and the Zonda 9 FX. We have strobes hidden everywhere. Um, we have almost 90, I think it is, cobra et and cobras around the room for beam work that kind of edge around the um, oval stage. And actually on the oval stage itself, we have 12 clay packy reflections, which the Cobras light into and bounce off, which we're using on some of the interval performances, as opposed to the delegations. Um, there's Martin Air Effects is lighting all the audience. There's clay packy BIs on the audience, Martin PXLs. Um, and then the whole key light system, which is the most important thing to me, is the Roby Forte products, which is the best key light product on the market uh, as a hard source for this scale. Uh, it has a beautiful tint channel to be able to dial out green or magenta separately to the colour mixing system. It's a high CRI and we're using those as the key lights as well as the follow spots. So the follow spots and the fixed keys all match together on the Roby follow spot system. We are stage left at a distro, uh, one of the distro positions, one of the many distro positions we've got. Um, this is uh, some, of, some of the MPUs we, we have. So there was a, a requirement from the programmers uh, that the, the network system was uh, capable of, of, uh, of a 10 gigabit speed. Uh, so that gave us an opportunity to uh, invest in, 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 new, uh, in new gear to, to upgrade our current systems from our current stock. So we, uh, we have brought in um, Luminex uh, Luminodes and um, Netgear 10 gigabit switches, um, which, which have all been great. And give, like I say, given an opportunity to um, to put them out on Eurovision, which I think the programmers are quite happy about. Managing the, the, the requirements of the network has been quite a challenge for us, uh, or, or one, of, one of the challenges for us, uh, given, again, just given the scale of it and, 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 and the, amount of, uh, the amount of units and, 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 and data distribution needed to, to control the network. It's required a lot, of, a lot of planning, a lot of discussion to design and develop a, a real secure um, s uh, network system. The whole upstage section of the show is pretty much exclusively all uh, Roby as it's turned out. So we have an upstage wall of painties, which, don't, which are brilliant because they're really bright. They don't have to fight against video because they're when the video is turned away. So they're far upstage. So we have a whole grid of those. Um, and on the back of the walls, we have the Roby Tetra Xs, which gives us a whole load of different looks, big pixelated walls of light. 
um, tight beam work and then the flower. The lighting just about fits within the weight loading of those doors. And then we have two Sharpie X frames mounted on the bottom to give us some back beams as well as those doors revolve. Um, and you know, using MA3 with their the really clever grid system with MA3, Tom Young, uh, our main programmer, has been creating insane kind of content across those those walls without having to use a media server. We're not pixel mapping them, we're driving them via programming and it gets it more beat perfect. And uh, using MA3, we've managed to create some amazing programming with those. I'm the lighting programmer for this year's Eurovision here in Liverpool. There are three of us uh, in the programming team, uh, such as myself, uh, my colleague Alex Mildenhall, who is uh, also doing the moving lights, the effects lighting with me, and then Mark Nicholson, who's doing the key lighting over the other side. It's unlike anything else, just um, in terms of the uh, amount involved and the speed at which it runs. Uh, when, when we start the, uh, start the show, there's no getting off the train. It's, uh, it's heading straight towards the station. It's great to be a part of, you know, it's great to be a part of such a great team as well. So we started back in London. We did uh, about three weeks of previous work um, at Nega through a supplier, um, where we programmed all of the delegations. Um, then when we came to Liverpool, we uh, carried on in previous in a room here and we worked on all the show elements. And then uh, once we'd finished that, we were ready to transfer across to the real world. So we had about three days of a uh, bit more programming and focusing. Uh, so we carried on doing previews when we got here uh, for the show stuff. Uh, and then after three days of programming and focusing, we transferred across to the real world. As an ex-programmer myself, um, using MA1 and MA2, I've been there from transitions and consoles, and we had a really good chat to start this project uh, about whether we would use MA2 or MA3 software. We knew it would be on MA3 hardware. It was a conversation we had, and the conversation was, we will take it on if we feel that it is ready. Uh, and we had very early conversations. Tom Young and Alex Mildenhall, the, pro the main programmers, Tom's our lead programmer, um, had deep conversations with MA. They work with us directly and have been here the whole time. We've had someone here with us all the time for previews and uh, rehearsals. And it has absolutely been rock solid. I've been pro the MA from the beginning and uh, Alex, who's programmed this with me, is also very uh, pro the MA3 platform. So it was a, it was a great choice to have. And, and Alex and I had lots of chats about it beforehand. We decided that actually it was, it was the way to go. And it's been worth its weight in gold. Some of the new features totally saved our lives. Been using a lot of the recipe functionality, uh, which has meant if we've had to swap fixtures out, it's made that programming process a load easier. When Alex is programming, he's entirely based on recipes. So it makes it really quick and easy to change if anything needs to change. And the other great thing is we've been using a lot of the uh, MA Tools plugins as well, which have really helped and allowed us to achieve things that you, you just can't achieve on, on other platforms, really. So, yeah, it's definitely been worth its weight in gold. We're around 130,000 parameters, so it's a big show, just in our side, and then Mark's got another 15 or 16,000. Um, and, yeah, it's been brilliant. It's definitely offered us things that we couldn't have done on on the previous platform, which has been great. And uh, the support from uh, Ambersphere over here in the UK and MA has been, as it always is, second to none. So that's been really great as well. And then, so obviously in terms of hardware, we've got nine consoles here. So we've got four uh, full sizes with Alex and I. There is uh, two lights down with Mark. And then we also, for programming on the floor, have uh, another two MA3 lights and another MA3 full size that we can plug in. Uh, along with 23 uh, processing units. So it's quite a, big, quite a big system overall. I think no matter how dramatic the set design is or the lighting or the incredible directing that we have, it is important to remember that the artists performing are our heroes. They, we're doing the show for them and we have to be able to cater all these sort of wonderful creatives that they bring. So I think, I think this year in particular, the, the caliber of talent that we have is really phenomenal. You know, for, for many of us producing this show who work around the world, um, being able to see this level of talent competing in this show is it's quite thrilling to watch and to see. This whole project I've wanted to you know, embrace as many people as possible into our show. It's not just the UK show, it's a Ukraine show as well. So I reached out to uh, Jenna Kostira from the Ukraine, uh, who I found on Instagram, who's a very well-known 
lighting designer from the Ukraine who's come on board to assist me as one of my associates. So we have a, I have two British associates and one Ukrainian associate just to embrace everybody uh, into this show. And uh, we've kind of tried to keep it as diverse as possible. We've had a 50% makeup of females uh, in our lighting team. We're trying to embrace as many people into it, into the lighting department as possible. We've brought in students from two local colleges to assist with follow spotting. And we're all very much about having a huge embracing team uh, that looks very different from a normal lighting team on a show like this. The reality of Eurovision is it's 37 delegates. It's not my show, I'm the lighting designer, but it isn't my show. It's the sum of all of those delegations. So it's my responsibility to take on board all of their creatives.